Well, for those of you that have missed me for a few days, I'm sorry to have denied you so much like daddy. But you probably know what I was up to, at least some of you. Watching the Cubs in the World Series. Watching the Cubs actually forbid, win the World Series. And the past few days, I've needed to kind of rest and recuperate. So I'm back. I'm getting some video content up on this channel. So it's celebrations, everybody. All right, so it's Q&A time. Let's see some of the questions that have been submitted over the past week or so. And see how good or not so good they are. Uh, let's start here with Akil. Yajaman. I hope I pronounced that at least somewhat accurately. Uh, thoughts on Taker returning on the November 15th edition of SmackDown Live and his road to WrestleMania 33. I don't know what the road to WrestleMania 33 would be other than the fact if you're bringing him back on SmackDown, it would lead you to believe maybe John Cena, which is probably the best path for the company at this point in time and for both Taker and Cena. Uh, and then... Um, be good to see him back. Um, furthermore, your thoughts on the new Cruiserweight show, 205 Live. <laughs> to me, my opinion, it's almost like the WWE acknowledges their main roster mistake with these guys. Um, and it's their way of doing a show with them on the network and appealing more towards the fans that subscribe to the network. Maybe it's a way to try and get these guys over, but it almost seems like a way that they can back off of utilizing them as much on Raw. Because it's not like they're utilizing them well. It's just weird that they would give them their own show when they're not doing well with them on the, on the main Raw show, uh, even though the Cruiserweights belonged on SmackDown to begin with, let's be honest. If, if you were going to do it, they always fit better into the Smack, SmackDown uh, portfolio. Putting them on Raw was stupid. I told you it was fucking stupid. You don't believe it was fucking stupid. You see the evidence. Eat ass. Period. Um, but good for them, I guess. Another chance to be featured. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing for them either. Um, Hug life for life. Since Bailey is supposed to be the female John Cena, when will she add the five huggy snuggle to her moveset? Hopefully soon. <laughs> Just tries to hug everybody. <laughs> Musgrave 322. In a Universal Championship match at WrestleMania 33, should the Royal Rumble winner Big E face off against I Am Jericho? No. God, at this point in time, I don't even know what they should do for the title match at 33. I don't even know if I'm that down on Big E winning the Rumble. Although, I'd be fine with it if they did it. I just don't know that they have a clear-cut guy, honestly. And that's part of the whole reason why I suggested Big E to begin with. You're going to do something that will get some attention and represent some type of change. Well, there you go. You know, having somebody else win it, I'm not, I don't know. Um, let's see here. Jay Renton, 1901. Now the women are being given somewhat of a feature. Should the cruiserweights become the piss break? I think for some, they probably already are the piss break. But let's not pretend that a lot of these hardcore fans really care that much about the women. You know, they've been the piss break for many years, and a lot of people still have a lot of things to say about them. Uh, but right now, the cruiserweights are definitely the piss break. Um, let's see here. Michael Corvin, thoughts on the Cleveland Indians mascot? Do you agree, disagree with others that it's racist to American Indians? Um, you know, yeah, I, I, I think it is racist. Does it really matter if I think it is? No. I think if you ask Native Americans of different tribes and those that are left that weren't obliterated by the white man, um, and and in some cases themselves, uh, if they think it's racist, you know, if, if you did like one big vote and everybody that was primarily Native American or had like 50% Native American descent voted and said it was racist, then it's racist and it should go. If they said it's not racist, then it's not racist to them, then why should it bother other people? And that's the best way I can look at it at this point in time. Me personally, yes, I don't think it's a very good portrayal. It, it could be viewed as racist. You know, and it's different coming from a white guy's perspective because, you know, if somebody called me, you know, being of German descent, they called me, uh, you know, they had a team in the NFL that was called the Dusseldorf Schnickel Nazis. Well, plenty of Germans come from... Uh, um, Nazi heritage, you know, and it's not something that's used to subjugate me. You know, if somebody calls me, uh, you know, the if they called the team the Cleveland Crackers, am I going to be offended by that? No, because again, that's not something that's used to help hold me down. 
you know, it's not part of a, a larger racist profile of uh, treatment towards my group of people. You know, so the perspective is different. Um, Retro Gamer 1995, do you think it would be better all around if John Cena doesn't make it to 16? No, because I'm going to be honest with you, him winning 16 or even 17 titles is not going to do any more or less damage to the company than the first 15 already did. If anything, you've went there, you got to go and follow through with it. And in fact, with Title 16 and Title 17, you do have some interesting appealing options in terms of the types of stories you could tell to get him to that spot. So if anything, it could be potentially some of the better work that Cena does at, its, at the tail end of his career of all times is winning the title. If done right, it could be some of the best work that he does. It could be some of the best stories that the company could actually tell with him. You know, there really could be. So no, I, I at this point in time, it would just figure, and this company's always wanted to go down that path of calling Cena the greatest of all time. So if they want to do it, then just let them go fucking do it. Um, but I don't think it's going to do any more damage. Like I said, if anything, there is story there. Um, let's see here. Uh, Gerald Bravlovsky asked, who has the biggest dick in the WWE? Charlotte. Um, Victor Tran, 562. Who would you book for the main event for WrestleMania 33? At this point in time, I really don't know. Although, if you're doing Cena versus Taker, that probably has to be the match that closes out the show. Nothing else is going to measure up to a potential Cena-Taker match at 33. Um... Rhino Van Dam says the cruiserweight division is a disaster, and once again, OTRS Central proved right, but people didn't want to hear it. I know it's not a question, but it was there, so I made sure I read it, because of course it makes me sound good, because I was right, just like I fucking said. Delete Jeff Kyles says Randy Orton's wife is having another girl. Of course. The Breakfast Club doesn't make sons, they make daughters. There's a reason it used to be called Degeneration X, as in X chromosome. As in, not making any damn sons. Just saying. Uh, let's see here. Swag Pizza 27. What has more holes in it? WWE storytelling or Dino Bravo? <laughs> Dino Bravo has a lot of holes in him. Why? <laughs> because he got into cigarette smuggling. He got shot a bunch of times. I think like 18 times, including 7 times in the head. And now he's dead. But with that said, the only thing that could be arguably in wrestling more Swiss cheese-like than Dino Bravo is dead ass is WWE storytelling. So I will go WWE storytelling. Feels good. I got a Dino Bravo question. How about that? Uh, and then he also asked, was there a video you ever made, but you just never put it out? Oh, yeah, that happens quite for a variety of reasons. For a variety of reasons, I could record something, and then the next day or two when I'm getting ready to upload it, it's been um, made obsolete because something has happened. Or I've recorded it and I just didn't like where I was going with it. I have recorded it and I'm like, eh, I don't really think this is a, a quality piece of work. So that happens all the time, actually. There's quite a bit of stuff that I actually do record that never sees the light of day for you guys. Uh, the one Jimmy 100. What if DZ left WWE, went to TNA, won the world title four times, then TNA died, then he made a company to become the top star? Um then we would call his suspect sissy ass Jeff Jarrett. Uh, fuck, Mary kill, Nicki Minaj, Sasha Banks, and Maurice. I think this is pretty easy. I would have to fuck Maurice. One, I've never had a white girl. Two, I'm going to just put some chocolate cake on my cock and watch her go to town. Maybe sprinkle in a little uh, booger sugar to go on top of it, the icing, if you will. Uh, you know, but put it right in your dirty, dirty butthole. Not even like a pleasure thing. Just, you know, it's like discipline. It's like, I, I don't want to. I have to. You know, but yeah. Because I've never done a white girl. I would have to do a white girl. So I'll have to pick the fuck here with Maurice. In terms of the Mary, it'd probably be Sasha Banks. Um, and the one I do nothing with is Nicki Minaj. I don't want to do anything with her fake plastic, uh, no talent having ass. Thank you very much. Let's see here. What do we got next? Uh, the Troy Johnson. Should WWE put the Slammy Awards back in the weekend of WrestleMania? I don't think so. If anything, I would prefer they did it uh, maybe during the Royal Rumble weekend. That would be a better place for it. A way to start off the year by recapping the year. If you were going to do it there or anywhere else than where they do it, usually in November, December, I would say put the Slammies on the night before the Royal R Rumble. It was a WrestleMania weekend. 
now they're going to be doing the Hall of Fame event on Friday night, which I think is a mistake. It belonged on Saturday night. He should be keeping the NXT show on Friday night because basically you would have a night of wrestling, then a night for remembrance, if you will, and nostalgia pops, and then more wrestling. Now we've got nostalgia pops, and then it's wrestling, and then it's even more longer wrestling. Uh, it's just too much wrestling kind of back-to-back. -back. And I thought the Hall of Fame event on Saturday night was a great way to go. Uh, I don't like how they're doing it. And where are you going to fit the Slammies in there? Thursday night? You can go back-to-back -back with the Hall of Fame ceremony on Friday night? Or do the Slammies before the big NXT show on Saturday night? Uh, uh, Slammies, either keep them where they are, or if anything, put them at the Royal Rumble time. Uh, Finsuke, do you think Raw, if it switched to two hours again, would be better or more shit packed less, into less time? I think if anything, it would just trick us into feeling like it's better just because it wouldn't feel like such a grind to watch it every single week. It's three hours is a lot. Three hours is a hell of a lot. And that creates a lot of the problems fundamentally right there. Just making it go two hours would help, at least from a perception standpoint. And it could, in theory, just be more shit in less time, or the same amount of shit in less time, or less shit in less time. And it might end up just being less shitty stuff in less time, and therefore it would feel like it's a little bit better. But it doesn't necessarily mean the show itself would actually be better. Uh, c Sefer 96 do you think the ratings can get any worse than this? Can the WWE come back from it? The answer to both of those questions is yes. I don't like, to touch on the second part, I don't like when I hear the excuses of not as many people are plugged in, not as many people are doing this, not as many people are... No, those are just pathetic excuses. If your product is good enough, people will watch. Period. End of discussion. Stop making fucking excuses. As far as the ratings can get any worse, they also can get worse. You know, five years ago, if you had told me they'd been hovering around with two, I'd been like, eh, maybe in an apocalyptic type of sense that could happen, but I don't think they would let it get to that point. But they did Who's to say five years from now they're not getting a 1.0 rating? And then what the fuck are we going to say? What's the excuse going to be then? Holy shit. Uh, Nate Steele. What are your thoughts on D. Wade as the Chicago Bull so far? Um, been curious that he's been shooting so many threes and actually hitting a number of threes. We'll see how it plays out over the course of an entire season. I wonder if Dwayne Wade is truly going to be comfortable taking a back seat to Jimmy Butler at times. Maybe there's an appreciation there for Dwayne Wade saying, hey, if I become a little bit more of a jump shooter and I allow Jimmy Butler to kind of be the alpha dog, it could give me some good years at the tail end of my career and extend my career and the quality of the end of my, of my career by a couple of years. Um, so we'll see what happens, but too early to tell at this point, too early to tell. Uh, Michael Corvin, is there any hope to fully repair the damage done to Bray Wyatt by WWE, or is he a lost cause? I mean, you'd have to do so much work to the point where it would feel like a force to where even that wouldn't necessarily work. I really think he's a lost cause at this point. And he's a perfect example of the fact when people try to say wins and losses don't matter, if the quality of the character is good enough and the story is good enough, it doesn't always have to matter. But at the end of the day, sometimes... Guys need to go over in big spots for people to give a shit about them. And the reason more people don't give a shit about Bray Wyatt is not only is what he does repetitive, the ultimate thing that's repetitive is he loses all of his big matches against people that matter. Why the hell would I get invested in that guy if he's never going to win? It invalidates the character. It makes no sense. Why would you do that? And of course they do, because that's what the WWE does. Uh, JL82, who would you say is likely to or possibly will go into the Hall of Fame this year. Who would you like to see? I'm assuming Goldberg will be the headliner. I'd really like to see Owen Hart. Um, maybe Davy Boy Smith. Uh, yeah. Bam Bam, I, you know, just Rick Rude. There's lots of names I could think of that are still out, the best of my memory. Uh, let's see here. A young jail, who do you think will win the Royal Rumble and who will they face? I have no idea at this point. I have no clue. That is a fair question, because I just don't know. Um, Tasty Waffles. Who would have won a match between Roman Reigns with Summer in his corner and Mark Henry with Smokey in his corner? I mean, yes, Summer's love for Romans is real, and she would most certainly be an asset in his corner. Um, but I mean, you're talking about a, a tag team combination of Mark Henry being managed by Smokey. Who the fuck's ever going to overcome that? Shit. Shit. Imagine Smokey get in the ring and you look at John Cena, let's say, and he just starts licking himself. 
John Cena wouldn't know what the fuck to think. And Smokey, by hook or by crook, he'd make sure the world's strongest man goes over. There'd be fucking interference from Precious, from Feisty, from every goddamn buddy. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Mark Henry and Smokey all day of the week. Uh, let's see here. Anything else? Uh, MacDog714, do you think if Psycho Sig gets inducted into the Hall of Fame, he'll break his leg jumping off the stage? I hope when he got ready to do his speech, somebody wouldn't, wouldn't tell him, hey, break a leg. He already did. <laughs> but with that said, I would love to see Psycho Sid be in the Hall of Fame class for 2017. And let me state this once again for the record. And if you don't agree with me, then you fucking suck, period. Go watch your flipping midgets some fucking where else. If Psycho Sid was in the WWE today, he would be the biggest star the company has. He has the look. He had the personality, the shtick. And by God, compared to most of the fucking roster, he most certainly had the mic skills. You know and I know <laughs> that you are. <laughs> week after week, you try to make me look like a jackass. <laughs> Hey, can we go again? No, we're live, buddy. Oh, Psycho Sid, sweet Jesus, baby. Ah, how much the business needs you. MacDog714 also asks, What do you think Stephanie says to Triple H during sexual intercourse? Well, Hunter probably hopes that she doesn't... Uh, you know, let me step that back. What does she say? She could say, Randy? Oh, you? Um, she could say, Dad? Creepy. Um, could scream out Sean's name, Kevin Nash's name. She can't be creepy and not. Uh, <laughs> probably based off of their history. Hunter, that wasn't a son, damn you! What does it take to get the other chromosome that I need to make a son? How could you be the creator of any and anything and everything and you can't make a son? Like if if we look at the books of Hunter Hearst and Helmsley, it's not the story of Adam and Eve. <laughs> it's the story of Anna and Eve because God can only make daughters. <laughs> Anyway, that's enough of this. Uh, some other videos coming up soon. Thanks for you guys for submitting your questions and sitting mercifully through this uh, Q&A video. I'll see you later.